Hello and welcome to this short series of videos on the very basics of mechanical ventilation. In this video we're going to look at how the body handles the task of non-mechanical ventilation, otherwise known as breathing, and then compare that with how a ventilator can breathe for us. We'll also have a look at some of the potential problems associated with letting a machine control our lungs. In normal breathing, the lungs are primarily worked by a large muscle at the bottom of our chest called the diaphragm. In its relaxed state, the diaphragm is dome-shaped, but when it contracts, it becomes longer and thinner, pulling both the left and right lung down with it, stretching them down and to the sides, increasing their size and volume. This increase in volume creates a negative pressure inside the lungs compared with the air outside. It is this negative pressure that draws air into the lungs through our airway, bringing the much-needed life-giving oxygen with it. We can therefore think of normal breathing as being driven by negative pressure. The oxygen is absorbed through the lining of the lungs into the bloodstream for the body to use. Carbon dioxide, a waste product produced when oxygen is broken down, heads the opposite direction, leaving the blood through the lining of the lungs. When the diaphragm relaxes, the lungs contract back to their previous place, pushing the air along with the carbon dioxide back out through the airway into the big bad world. Now let's compare this to mechanical ventilation. The first thing to note is the breathing tube. It's inserted through a patient's mouth, down their throat and into their airway. The second thing to note is the ventilator. In the ICU, the ventilator is machined to the side of the patient's bed that looks like it belongs on the space shuttle. It may look fancy, but it's basically a pump, albeit quite a complicated one. It's used for pushing air into a patient's lungs, a bit like an electric pump blowing up a balloon. So, as we've already mentioned, during normal breathing, our lungs expand, creating a vacuum. The lungs suck air in via negative pressure. During mechanical ventilation, the lungs are expanded by pushing air in. In other words, by exerting a positive pressure. Now that we've taken over control of the lungs, we can exert some control over how they function. For example, if we're concerned that the patient is not getting enough oxygen, we can increase the percentage of oxygen in the inhaled air. If we want, we can give the patient 100% oxygen using the ventilator. We can increase the size of each breath the patient takes. Bigger breaths mean inhaling more oxygen and exhaling more carbon dioxide. We can also make the lungs work faster or slower, again increasing the amount of oxygen being drawn into the lungs and the amount of carbon dioxide breathed out. The amount of time spent breathing in compared to breathing out can also be altered. Typically the ratio of in breaths to out breaths is approximately 1 to 2. For example, breathing in for 1 second and breathing out for 2 seconds. But we can alter this depending on if you want to put more focus on breathing in oxygen or breathing out carbon dioxide. For example, we can increase the proportion of time the patient spent breathing out, allowing them to clear more CO2. While a ventilator can definitely save your life, it sadly can also cause you all sorts of problems, especially if not appropriately managed. A big problem with long-term ventilation is that the muscles that would normally be used for breathing are inactive. The diaphragm, like all muscles, if not regularly used, becomes weaker. This means that when the time comes for the patient to begin breathing on their own again, they might find that their breathing muscles are no longer up to the job. For this reason, limiting the amount of time a patient spends on a ventilator is preferable, if not always possible. Another concern is that the breathing tube inserted down the patient's throat provides a convenient path for germs to get to the lungs, bypassing the mouse's normal defences. Mechanically ventilated patients are at greater risk of getting chest infections. Earlier, we compared mechanically ventilating a patient to blowing up a balloon. Well, as with balloons, if you push too much air into the lungs and the pressure gets too high, bad things are sure to happen. Too much pressure and volume can cause damage to the lungs and its lining. I hope you found this short video useful. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up. Maybe even hit subscribe if you want to be alerted when new videos come out.